in contribution to the kingdom's 2030 vision, First Salt Company Limited along with reputative partners offer to lead the kingdom initiative for the production and exploitation of the Saudi salt. The objective of this ventures is to move the kingdom to its rightful position as a world leader in the salt production. We thank you for giving us the chance to present this simple but nationally rewarding project. We hope that this initiative will grab your attention and interest as it did with us. This project is simple, clean and takes advantage of the inherent conditions and natural ingredients of the kingdom. The project takes advantage of the strategic location of the kingdom to the international markets. The kingdom has an area of 2.3 million square kilometers making it roughly one-third the size of the continental United States and as big as the whole Western Europe. Saudi Arabia is located in the subtropical latitude belt which makes it one of the hottest, sunniest and driest country in the world. Rainfall is low, erratic and averages 100 mm per year, nonetheless the whole regions may not experience rainfall for several years. We have plenty of seawater with extreme salinities. The Red Sea and Arabian Gulf come after the Dead Sea in term of salinity. One of the best and optimum utilization for any land is to farm it. If we pick up, for example, an area of 5 by 10 kilometers, and decided to farm it, we need first to grade the area, by dozing the sand dunes and making it leveled. Do agricultural land reclamation by changing the soil or add additives to make it fit for use. Then we plow the field. Next, install irrigation system. Then, plant the seed. Add expensive fertilizer, add expensive pesticide and continue irrigating the land with sweet water throughout the year. Assume, we have United States climate, resources and the farmer's efficiency, if we grow wheat, then we would get 17,000 tons of wheat at a market price of $5.4 million. If we grow apple trees, we can generate annual revenue of $72 million. But the kingdom has hot weather, extreme sun radiation, low rain, and very salty water. These conditions make Saudi Arabia one of the best area in the world to grow salt. We just need to fill this area with 1 meter deep seawater and leave it to dry out for one year. This will allow water to evaporate and salt to precipitate in the bottom of the pot. In an area of 50 square kilometers, with low maintenance, we can produce a high quality salt at a rate of 2 million ton a year. With minimum market value of $60 million, this makes growing salt as comparable to growing potato and apple. We usually look down to salt, although it has high profit margin as good as caustic soda. We pick these three random international companies representing medium and large salt corporations. As you can see, they employ large number of people, have market price at or above $1 billion, and have good to impressive rate of return on their assets. We also picked four companies from the Saudi stock market. These companies are Ma'athen, which works in the same sector, basic materials. Petro Raw Big, since the government is active in building more refineries. Al Marai, the role model of the Saudi stock market. And Sabik the giant Saudi petrochemical company. Needless to say, that these companies enjoy subsidized feedstock, subsidized utilities and relatively cheap labor. In contrast, salt companies rely merely on sustainable renewable resources, the sun and the sea. That was an introductory comment or an opening remarks. Let us begin with the presentation which will take no more than 15 minutes. We will talk about World production, salt use, production method, solar salt, price, Saudi salt, bittern salt, This chart shows the historical world salt production. Today, world salt production is in excess of 300 million tons. Production compared with population growth was significantly greater because new uses for salt were discovered that had changed the demand patterns. Since 1980, world salt production was doubled. In the last five years, production had increased by 6.5%. World demand by region is shown on this table. Demand is the highest in Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa. China, the biggest salt producer, who exports salt, will soon start to import it. 
By year 2021, global salt demand will be 310 million tons and will continue to grow by less than 2% annually for the next 10 years. This pie chart shows the major countries that produce salt. China is the largest producer with US as the runner-up. Saudi Arabia is listed under miscellaneous producers with market share of 0.6%. This table gives a 20-year glance of these major producers. China and India's salt production has tripled while Chile and Turkey have increased their production by eight folds. Saudi Arabia added 800,000 tons only. Indian salt is produced by more than 13,000 small local producers. The majority of the Australian salt is produced by the Anglo-Australian company Rio Tinto. Mexican salt is produced by the expert Adora de Sal, in a JV with the mega Japanese company, Mitsubishi. Chilean salt is produced by the American Allied Salt and the Harriman k &S companies. Of the 1.8 million tons, Sabic produces and consumes 1.25 million tons of the Saudi salt, annually. Thus, unfortunately, only half a million tons circulates in the Saudi market for domestic consumption as well as export. This is where we belong and this is where we should be in the near future, because we have the potential. Actually, it is not a potential. It is a confirmed sustainable reserve of 18 million tons. The biggest company in the salt industry is K&S Group headquarter in Germany with rated capacity of 30 million tons a year. Where do we use salt? The biggest salt consumer is the chemical industry and consumes 180 million tons a year to produce variety of chemical compound related to sodium and chlorine. The production of all these chemical compounds starts with this electrolysis cell. This cell deals with hydrogen and chlorine and therefore it is dangerous and has no tolerance to impurities. Salt must be 99% pure for safe chemical processing. 30 million tons is used for road and pavement de-icing. 60 million tons is used for food processing, food preparation and other uses such as agriculture, paper, rubber, and others. Of important use is water softener. USA and Asia consume large amount of salt as softener. Softener is salt pressed in form of pellets. The kingdom is an importing country. Every day, 25% of the ships leave our ports empty. These pellets can be put on board of these ships and get exported. In fact, our young Saudi can flood the world with all types of salts, industrial, de-icing, food, table, flavored, pellets, perfumed, bath, crystal, refined, pharmaceutical, and ultra-pure. Now let us see how salt is produced. About 105 million tons of the world's salt production comes from rock salts, which mine below the ground. It is considered of a low quality as it entraps different compounds. As for solution mining, water is injected into a deposit. Salt dissolves in the water creating a brine solution which is then piped to a salt refinery where the solution is chemically treated and then water is evaporated. Salt from this process is the purest. We have five small salt refineries in the kingdom. In Saudi Arabia this type of salt is found frequently under subco with purity of 70 to 97%. Sabic utilizes solution mining for their salt feed. It costs high premium to get it purified at a processing quality. 110 million tons are produced from Solar Evaporation Pond, our proposed project. This is a typical salt pond owned by Dampier in Australia. It is 100 square kilometer and produces 4.2 million tons a year. The following is a rough operation of a typical salt works and does not represent the actual operation of any salt company. Seawater at salinity of 28 ppt is pumped into first pond and left there to evaporate half of its volume where salinity becomes 70 ppt. Marine life and fish population is low due to the high salinity but algae grow extensively. Water is pumped into the next pond where salinity reaches 110 ppt. All fish will die. Heavy metal will drop out. Planktons and microorganisms accumulate extensively. The water is pumped into the next pond where salinity reaches 170 ppt. Gypsum salt drops out. Algae color pales out and turns into light green. The water is pumped into the next pond where salinity reaches 220 ppt. Algae change color to brown. Brine shrimps bloom due to the massive biomass of the planktons. Birds will prey and consume the brine shrimps. Water is pumped into the next pond where salinity reaches 280 ppt. Brine shrimps will die and will continue to be consumed by the birds. These ponds are heaven for the seabirds and shoreline birds and will be crowded by hundreds of thousands of them. Water is pumped into the next pond where salinity reaches 300 ppt. 
salt tolerant bacteria eat up all the remaining brine shrimps. The heavy and thick brine is then distributed to the crystallizer. Once 90% of the water is evaporated, the last 10% of the brine is has high concentration of magnesium and sulfate compounds and will be drained into another pond called bittern pond. The production crystallizer is now full of 98% pure sodium chloride salt known as a table salt and is ready for harvesting. Let us jot down some notes. The process is done through a series of ponds, to keep each pond healthy and alive as no marine fauna or flora, can tolerate high salinity range. Remember, this is an ancient technology. Too much rain disrupts or restarts the biological cycles. Also, extracting salt improves seawater salinity and acidity at bay and offsets the impact of desalination plants. About 70% of the area will be covered by algae. One square kilometer of algae consumes CO2 emission of medium-sized power plant, thus, eligible for carbon credit. This area will be recognized as an important bird area and will receive United Nation identification number. Also, it will be a tourist and health landmark. Let us go over the attractive colors and the operations of the salt works. As for the price, impurities decrease the salt value and reduce the potential end uses. Increase in purity surges the salt price exponentially. This is the price of various salt types in United States. As you can see, solar salt sells at $75 to $120 ton. In the kingdom, we have 87 entities that produce, handle, or consume salt including large fisheries and bakeries. The gross capacity is 3.2 million tons. Licensees holders are capable of producing large amount of salt through surface extraction of the salt. However, due to limited infrastructure and lack of dedicated salt port, annual export has been limited. The Kingdom salt annual production hover around 1.8 million tons. 1.25 million tons is produced by Sabic who also consumes it all internally. These are the locations of the major salt deposit in the Kingdom. The largest deposit is in Jazan area and Farasan Island. About 10 licenses have been issued producing 450,000 tons, annually. Also, about 6 concessions, occupying 93 square kilometers, have been issued producing 1.3 million tons, annually. This is a pictures tour in the Saudi salt industry and Saudi salt works. One of the old and famous salt works with good salt quality located in central of the kingdom. Last year, the Kingdom salt export value was $23 million. The average through the last five years was $14 million. Not impressive. And such an item and transaction go under miscellaneous. Last year, the salt import value was $33 million. The average through the last five years was $17 million. Let us talk about bittern salts. The average salinity in the Arabian Gulf is around 45 ppt. This means that one cubic meter of seawater contains 45 kilograms of salt. In a lab conditions, if we evaporate 30 million cubic meter of seawater, we will generate 1 million tons of sodium chloride, 51,000 tons of calcium sulfate, 
80,000 tons of magnesium sulfate, and so on. Magnesium chloride is used for food preparation, fertilizers, refractory, cement, and others. The price ranges from $150 to $210 per ton. Magnesium sulfate is used as medicine, water treatment, and for production of paper. Gypsum is a key construction element, while Saudi Arabia produces 2.1 million tons a year. The high global demand attracted the United States and Iran to produce 23 million tons, annually. Ash is an important fertilizer for chloride-sensitive plants such as rice, potato and wheat. The kingdom produces urea and phosphate fertilizers through Sabic and Maathen. Saltworks projects will enable us to produce the potash. How are we doing in the bittern salt? Well, last five years, our average export was 7 million while our import was 300 million dollars. A huge gap. To sum up, these are the benefits of this project or initiative. Great component for the Kingdom 2030 vision. Sustainable, renewable and constitutes no load on the government. Avails abundance of basic materials which will remodel the chemical industry and diversify the Kingdom's economy. Feedstock for the industrial cities Modan. Oil export in a form of white products can also be in a form of caustic soda. Potash can be added to our fertilizer portfolio. Creates extensive area of algae which will work as a carbon dioxide sink. Here we salute this great yet simple salt works in Egypt, while it is built from an in-between sand dunes, its products are consumed in the United States for de-icing and other industrial uses. Our vision is to put the kingdom as a global leader in salt industry and related chemicals products. Form an IPO company similar to Maathen, dedicated for sea salt, minerals and rare metals with large and multiple concessions. These activities will be complemented by a research institutes and training and development center. Worth to note the size of the concessions for the agriculture companies which their operations rely heavily on underground sweet water. Be the largest algae harborer in MENA and to be the major contributor to the soon coming Saudi carbon trade market. Be one of the pillars for the ecotourism industry and its growing market as well as the associated health and therapeutic clinics and clubs, similar to the ones on the Dead Sea. Endorsed by BirdLife International, SaltWorks conserves the environment, enrich wildlife and support migratory birds rounds.